In this video, we will talk about how to identify corresponding angles and corresponding sides. Very, very, very important. When determining similarity, the first thing that you do is you want to make sure that your um, shapes are oriented the same direction. It's really hard. Well, what do I mean by oriented the same direction? See how this triangle is sitting on this um, obtuse angle, but this triangle is not? Well, it's really hard to determine the um, corresponding sides and corresponding angles because they're not facing the same way. So when I say oriented the same direction, I mean like facing the same way um, so that they they are uh, look, look like they're in the same position. These are not in the same position. It's much easier to determine your corresponding angles and cores corresponding sides when you do that. So what you really want to do is redraw these shapes so that they're oriented or facing the same way. So what do I mean by that? Well, here are the shapes again. I want to redraw just one of those shapes. So I'm going to leave this large shape here. I'm going to leave that here and I'm going to take the small shape and I'm going to redraw it. So basically I'm just going to draw this big shape again but I'm just going to draw another one right underneath it. So what I have done is I have taken this shape and I have actually turned it right, 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 this way. So let me see if I can show you. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I'm going to uh, put another shape on top here. All right, let's see if this makes sense. So uh, here is... Um, Here's this small shape right there. I just kind of moved it down. So it's right here, and I'm going to actually take it and I'm going to rotate it around so that now I'm going to face it in this direction. So all I've done is I, is I took um, this shape right here, the small one, and I reoriented it. I flipped it around so that it's now facing like this. But now we just have to label it. So I took Q, and it, Q is now down here, and Q measures 100 degrees. R flipped all the way over to here, and it now measures 30 degrees. And then P is up here, and it measures 50 degrees. So now I'm going to label my corresponding angles. So, um, all you're going to have to do is say, well, angle C, angle C corresponds with angle R. So angle C and angle R. Notice that I'm not um, talking about angles within the same shape. I go from one shape to the other. So C corresponds to R. So what do you think angle A corresponds to? Angle A and angle P are corresponding. And then what about angle B? What do you think angle B corresponds to? Angle B and angle Q, angle Q are corresponding. So that's it. That's all for corresponding angles. Now let's talk about corresponding sides. Let me do some erasing. All right, so um, let's now talk about the corresponding sides. So let's take side AC or CA. What does AC correspond to? AC corresponds to PR. See how it's much easier to determine your corresponding um, sides and angles when you have them facing the same way. So the way we note this is line segment A. C, this little symbol means line segment, and side, uh, segment P, R. I could also call it RP. So again, that was AC and PR. Those are corresponding. All right, what about A, no, let me do a different color, AB. What would AB correspond to? It would correspond to PQ. So we're going to say segment AB and segment P, Q are corresponding. And then what is our last one? We have 
um, B, C, and that corresponds to Q, R. So segment B, C, and segment Q, R. And that's it. That's how to identify your corresponding angles and corresponding sides. In your whisk, make sure that you explain what I mean by the first thing you must do is the shape, uh, get the shapes oriented the same direction. And then explain what corresponding angles and corresponding sides actually mean.